Hey there, sports history fan. This is Arnie Chapman, host of the Football History Dude podcast, right here on the Sports History Network. Now, before we jump into another sports history adventure, let me tell you about this episode's sponsor. We partnered with Rochester Sports Autographs, the largest JSA authenticated autograph distributor in the United States, where you can get deals on over 30,000 autograph sports collectibles. They even have film, music, and other entertainment autographs on the site, so there's something for everyone. Perhaps you're looking for a gift for Mother's Day, or maybe Father's Day. Heck, who needs a holiday as an excuse to give a piece of sports history to your loved ones? Or how about yourself? Today seems like a great day to add to your sports cave, right? But how is RSA able to offer such great deals on JSA authentication, you ask? Well, they do this by making deals directly with athletes, so there are no extra markups, and they choose to pass these savings on to the customer. All orders from Rochester Sports Autographs are top quality and shipped to your door with top authentication and money-back guarantee. And to make sure RSA knows that the Sports History Network sent you, we created a special link for you. All you have to do is head to shoprsa.com forward slash SHN. Again, that's shoprsa.com forward slash SHN. Head over there to get your piece of sports history today. Welcome, sports fan, and back to the show. One guy with Mike presents dingers and dunks. This is our 2022 MLB in review, along with our 2023 preview. Uh, this episode, we're going to talk about the American League. I know last year, for all you OGs of this show, we did seven episodes last year. We did every single division plus the playoffs as well well this year we're going to trim that down to three episodes we're going to do two episodes of each league and then we're going to do the playoffs as well i mean obviously the playoffs man we'll probably just throw it on the back end of the national league you know because uh the playoffs probably won't take that long to do and there's no sense making a 10 minute podcast so yeah so welcome back i know it's been a while uh, a lot's changed. I got a little more free time in my hands. So, uh, I've been trying to put together some ideas to make the show better, to be more available online as well. And, uh, future's bright. That's all I gotta say. Stay tuned. Stay tuned in. Um, uh, also, uh, one of my coworkers and I, we're gonna, we're starting to form a podcast together about wrestling. So make sure you turn into that one. Cause that's going to be a hoot. Uh, we don't have a name yet. We don't have what we're going to do yet, but we have the idea out there. So that's going to be, that's going to come up. I, um, that's a yet to be determined date for that release. So, uh, a lot of, a lot of big things going on in the, uh, one guy with the mic, uh, universe over here. That's for sure. Uh, like I said, we're going to talk about the American league today and we're not going to talk about like, you know, the my standings in order on some of these on these divisions okay i just randomly picked out we're gonna do it with the teams and then afterwards after we review all the teams then i'll give you a breakdown of you know i'll tell you who i think is going to win the divisions of each one okay so that's what the goal is for today um i know that some of y'all are probably waiting for that part three of my Negro League series, which I have that coming up. Um, planning on releasing that next week. It's a few weeks old, but like I said, a few things changed, so I got a little um, got a little bit more hectic. Not really hectic, in my life, but some things changed, so therefore we had to. Um, Therefore, we just had to do some things differently for now, um, which is fine. It happens, right? So we're going to continue to make that happen. Um, I don't think it's. I, th- I think I'm going to change the format of that a little bit because I think it's going to be more of an opinion piece. Um, I got a lot to get off my chest on that on that as well, especially with the Hall of Fame and everything. So that's that. Uh, the dingers, the dunk side of things. Um, not really hitting a whole lot on the dunks. We got the NBA playoffs coming up, you know, we got, so that's always exciting and fun. 
Um, I really got to get back into the Jersey, the Jersey, uh, segment of it all as well. So the dunks are taking a little backseat. Um, as a, you know, I, I love to coach basketball. I'd love to play basketball. Uh, it's one of my more, you know, fond times of things doing. Uh, but my real knowledge, my real depth of sports, um, you know, goes really into baseball. I mean, baseball, I played from the age of time I was four years old, all the way up till I was 15. And then even after that, it's, I played slow pitch softball. So, I mean, I've been born and bra- born and raised on the diamond as per se. So I have a little bit more fire, a little bit more excitement when it comes to baseball on the history side of things. So yeah, that takes a little bit backseat. Basketball takes a little backseat, but basketball still is a passion of mine so for all you basketball fans out there that turn into for the dunk side of it um we'll we'll get some episodes out there for you um not gonna be it's gonna be few and far between um you know i'm gonna try to do a basketball episode at least once every month from here on out okay so uh a little did you know for you before we start up in here that Ken Griffey Jr. is officially the top 10 player being paid on the Cincinnati Reds this year with a $3.5 million contract. Uh, how does that per se happen? Well, you know, we talk about Bobby Bonilla Day every July 1st when he gets his $1.8 million from the Mets. Well, Ken Griffey Jr. gets $3.59 million from the Reds this year and for the next five, six years um, because, you know, Bernie Madoff, when he owned the or uh, not Madoff, but you know when when uh, when the former Mets owners did the whole thing with the deferment and everything else, other players saw that too and lashed on it as well. So Ken Griffey is also a guy we should be celebrating on opening day because he's making three point five nine million. And the set and the best part of it all is he probably could still go out there and hit twenty dingers as well because the kids got it. So. We're going to start with the AL East today, all right? We're going to start with the Baltimore Orioles. They were the surprise team last year. Up in commerce, nobody really knew that they were going to be as do as well as they did, and they shocked a lot of fans, except for this guy, all right? If you go back to last year's episode, you can definitely tell in the AL East, you know, I didn't think the Orioles were going to be that bad. Not as bad as everybody was thinking. And you know what? They weren't that bad. They went 83-79. and 79. They finished 16 games back, but... That Yankee squad was just tremendous last year. Was just by far the just a juggernaut what that off that Yankees team was. Uh the Pythagorean, you know, I like talked about the Pythagorean uh formula here, which is basically run scored, you know it's basically A plus B equals C. You know, this is basically what it works out to. Uh they had them at seventy nine and eighty three, so I mean it was a little flip flop, but because they did give up, they only scored 675 runs last year and gave up 688. So that's why. Uh, their top three players, for their po- top three position players last year was Adley Rushman, Cedric Mullins, and Ramon Urias. Their best pitchers were Sinel Perez, Dean Kramer, and Felix Bautista. All right. So a good squad last year. Um, they made some additions, definitely made some additions this year. I don't think it's going to be enough to put them over the top, make the playoffs, but you know, they'll have that little push because the East is just too damn good. Um, uh, they did lose some players. So their key losses was Jordan Lyles and Jesus Aguilar. Uh, their key additions though, they added pitching with Kyle Gibson and they also, We'll be getting uh, John Means back at some point this year, too. So, I know he's on the roster already, but having that guy come back and be able to plug him in as your fourth or fifth starter is going to be huge for these guys. Uh, On the position side, they got Adam Frazier, Michael Gibbons. I guess Michael Gibbons is a pitcher, my bad. Um, James McCann, Cole Irvin, the guy is on the mound, uh, on the bump now, too. He's going to be probably be their ace. And they got Ryan O'Hearn as well. So... I project that their lineup is going to be Adley Rushman uh, at catcher, Adam Frazier at second base, shortstop is going to be Jorge Mateo, 
Gunnar Henderson, Mr. Rookie of the Year candidate, right there, uh, is going to be playing third, holding down that three bag. I got Austin Hayes playing left field. Cedric Mullins playing center, obviously, because Cedric Mullins likes to go get it. That's for sure. Right field, we got Anthony Santander. Uh, at your DH, we're going to have a little rotation going on here between Frenchie Cordero, Kyle Stowers, Luan Diaz, and Ryan O'Hearn. I think all those guys are going to play DH at some point and play a little first base, play a little outfield. So, definitely think uh, there's going to be a little pop in this lineup as well. As I said, pitching staff, we're going to go Cole Irvin right off the bump. He's going to be our day one starter. Got Kyle Gibson going number two, Dean Kramer going number three, Kyle Bradish four, Grayson Rodriguez, we're going with our five starter, all right? You throw in Tyler Wells as our sixth. John Means, when he comes back, probably going to fl- slide right into that fourth or, fl- sp- fourth or fifth spot. Um, and you know, and then we got your main bullpen as well. Here we go. We got Felix Batista as our closer. Dude is going to be lights out. Jorge Lopez was great last year. Then they traded him to the Twins, and then Batista just went off from that setup role. Then you got your your two setup men are going to be Sunil Perez and Dylan Tate. They're going to be your setup guys. You got your middle relievers. It's going to be Michael Givens, uh, Brian Baker. There's your setup. And Logan Gillespie. Those are going to be your setup guys. Then your long guys are going to be D.L. Hall and Bruce Zimmerman. All right. Baseballperspectus.com. You know, I love these guys. They have a lot of... Uh, a lot of uh, insight. They got a lot of formulas going into. They have uh, the Orioles projected to go 74.4 and 87.6, right? I think that's pretty low, man. This They did add some bats. They add some pitching. And I understand that the AL East is, is uh, really tough, but you still got to play the rest of the AL. So you're going to play like the likes of Oakland. You're going to still play the likes of um, the Red Sox. You're going to still play the likes of... The White Sox, because I don't think the White Sox are going to be that great this year. You got the Royals, the Tigers. I mean, all they got, if, as you know, as a baseball philosophy, if you win two out of every three games, guess what? That's a 667 winning precision, boys and girls. That is playoff material. That's winning a division. Do I think they're going to win two out of every three games? No, I do not. I think they're going to win about 84 games, 85 games. They're going to win one or two more than what they did last year, and they're going to make the Yankees. And the Blue Jays sweat in this division. All right. So there you have it. 84 win team with the Baltimore Orioles. Put it down, write it up, send it in, boys and girls. Next up, we got the Boston Red Sox. You know, 2022 was a bad year for them. I said this going into 2022. Just want to let, I just want to reiterate how right on I was with my predictions last year. So you're, if you're listening to this podcast and want your MLB show, MLB preview, and you want to go make those bets, go for it, man. Listen to me. I got your numbers. I do the math. I do the I do the stats. Break it all down for you, just like we do every single week. All right. So the Boston Red Sox, we got. They went seventy-eight and eighty-four last year. They finished twenty-one games back, man. Twenty-one games back. That was a horrendous time. I always thought the worst signing ever of the offseason was Trevor Story, and I was proven correctly as he had a horrible year. Sorry, Trevor Story. If you're listening to this, I don't like to brag about how horrible year it was, but I predicted it. Maybe you have a little better bump now that you maybe come off the injured list and get back to shortstop. Maybe not. I don't know. Hopefully you do bounce back because, you know, I like you, Trevor Story. Anyways, uh, the uh, the Pythagorean had them at 76 and 86. So, again, right on the money almost. Two games off. I'm giving it to you. All right. They had 735 runs scored last year, but they gave up 700. And 87, my guys, that is, you score 735, your defense should not be giving up 787. Pitching staff should not be giving up 787. But here's the problem with the Red Sox is right here. Their top three position players, number one, Xander Bogarts. You know where Xander Bogarts playing at right now? San Diego. That's right. He signed a deal with San Diego because the Red Sox didn't pull the trigger on it. All right. You also had Rafael Devers. You also had Trevor Story. There's your top three position players. Again, it's kind of a low bar. Okay, Trevor Story was like their 12th best player on the team last year. Okay, top pitchers were Michael Waka, John Schreiber, Nick Pavetta. All right, they have some key additions though this year. All right, they have uh, Masataka Yoshida, Justin Turner, Adam Duvall, Alberto Mondesi. 
They got Richard Blyer, Corey Kluber, Kenley Jensen, Chris Martin, Jolie Rodriguez. But the biggest loss, their only loss I really care about, is Xander Bogerts. All right? You lost Bogey. That's all I'm saying. All right, your projected lineup is going to be at catcher. We got Reese McGuire behind the behind the plate. We got Tristan Cassis at first. We got Christian Arroyo at second. Enrique Hernandez at shortstop because Trevor Story is hurt currently. Alberto Hermondesi is hurt right now. You got Rafael Devers at third base. You got Masataka Yoshida in left field. Adam Duvall is going to play your center. Alex Verdugo is in right, and Justin Turner is going to be your DH. All right, those boys are going to p- apply some pop, but you don't have enough pop in this lineup to be effective in that AL East against those pitching staffs that they have rolling, just rolling out, just rolling out. Starting pitchers, we've got Chris Sale, Nick Pavetta, Corey Kluber, James Paxson, and Garrett Whitlock. All right, number one starter is going to be Pavetta. He's coming out on the ball right away. Sale's going to be your number two. Not a bad one-two combination there. Uh, your bullpen's looking at uh, Kenley Jansen is going to be at your closer. We got John Schreiber as your setup guy. Chris Martin, your other setup guy. Jolie Rodriguez is playing setup as well. Richard Blyler, Blyler, Blyler I can't even pronounce that guy's last name, but that's okay, is going to be your middle relief, right? We got Ryan Brazier as your middle relief, all right? You got your long guys, John w- Winikowski. I don't think I pronounced that, but that's all right. Long guy, Cutter Crawford. Long guy, Brian Matta. Here's one guy you'll never that you're going to – really think about this year. Brian Bello. He's going to be that fifth starter come come May. Brian Bello. He's going to throw some gas. Throw that heat. All right, man. So, baseballperspectives.com. Really generous to these guys, right? So, they're saying that they're going to finish 79.6 and 82.4. They haven't been finishing above the Orioles. I don't think that's the case. The Red Sox are going to finish dead last again. Okay. I don't want to say this team is bad, but they will struggle, okay? It will be more of the same, just saying. Uh, so I'm saying they're going to win about 75, 78 games, all right? They're going to finish last in the East. It's going to be another day, another dollar, you know? So it'll be okay. All you Red Sox fans, you better enjoy those uh, championships you got, boys and girls, because it's going to be a long time coming before you get another, all right? Next up, we got the New York Yankees. My boys, my green guys, the pinstripers, you know? The, the Mr. Uh, I built Jader Bay, built the new Yankee Stadium. Ruth built the old one, right, man? That's how we do it around here. We eat a lot of pizza pie, too, guys. Yeah. All right, man? New York Yankees just smoked the competition in the AL East last year. That's all there is to it. They went 99-63. and 63, Finished first place. You know what they did? They lost in the ALCS. You know to who? The Houston Astros, who've had their number for the, like, the last, I don't know, seven, eight postseasons. What can I say, guy? All right? Then you got the Pythagorean. They went, were supposed to go 106 and 56. They underachieved. They scored 100, 807 runs, boys and girls. They only allowed 567. Like, and you you didn't even break 100 wins, son. Like, you know, it was a little struggle there in the second half, though. They were looking really good that first half, but then they really struggled in the back half. That's all I got to say. All right, top three players. You're looking at Aaron Judge, of course. Guy almost had a triple count last year. It was a couple batting points behind Luis Arez who's now with the Miami Marlins, former Minnesota twin. Much love to my guy. All right. You got Glebor Torres. You know, Mr. Cubby, just saying, came from the Cubs. Far and part of that Araldus Chapman trade that the Cubs got did in 2016 to get uh, that World Series ring bought and paid for. After that, they haven't done squat yet. Just saying. DJ LeMay, who is the top three player there. All right. For position players, by the way. You got your pitchers. You got Nestor Cortez, obviously. And no, Jim Clatt, you were wrong. He's not that. All right, cool, just saying. All right, you got Garrett Cole. You got Michael King, okay? They had some key additions this year. They got Carlos Rodon and Tommy Canna- Kennelly, all right? They did lose uh, Jameson Talion, uh, not a big deal. He did come to the Cubs, though, just saying. Love that guy. All right, they did lose Chad Green out of the bullpen, and they also lost Matt Carpenter, who was a great midseason pickup, by the way. Added that extra bat, the little left hand, a pop, you know, a really resurgence year for Matt Carpenter. Actually rooted for him. You know why? Because he wasn't a flipping cardinal. That's why, boys and girls. Okay. Next up, we got the uh, projected starters here. Jose Trevino. Mr. Follow on Twitter of my guy, Mike Drow. All right. He's a Mike Drow fan. Mike Drow's a fan of his. 
That's how we do that, okay? We got Anthony Rizzo, Tony, as I like to call him. Big Tony, Big T. Mr. I got more defense than I should have. I should have more gloves with that defense I got, all right? He's got more pop now since he's out hitting in, in Yankee Stadium as well, which is great. I love to see it. Big T, big time. He's playing first base. You got Glaybor Torres playing second, all right? Just announced this weekend, Anthony Vlope. This is going to be your starting shortstop. Sorry, IKF, but you gone, son. You gone. Good, Ride that pine. Get traded, son. You gone. I actually had Anthony Vlope taking that spot over by July. Never would have thought in a million years he'd be open today shortstop. Youngest since Derek Jeter, the captain. You know, what you going to do? Josh Donaldson's playing in third base. You got Aaron Hicks out and left, right? Okay, good deal. Uh, Harrison Barrett currently hurt, so guess who's playing center field? Oswaldo Cabrera. I believe. Yeah. Yep. Oswaldo Cabrera because uh, the Prez, Prez guy didn't make it. That's why. Prez didn't make it. Uh, you got Aaron Judge and right. Uh, then you got Giancarlo Stanton as your DH. And DJ Lemihu is going to be your utility player. And he's going to be playing all six positions in the infield, man. Just saying. All right. Next up. Well, I shouldn't say all six because, you know, he doesn't play catcher. But he will be playing six positions like usual. First, second, third. Left field, right field. Dude's a beast. That's all I'm. That's all I gotta say. I love DJ LeMahieu. Best thing the uh, the Yankees did was get him. Your starting pitchers are looking like Garrett Cole, Carlos Rodon, N- Nestor Cortez, Luis Servino, Domingo Herman, and Frankie Montas. You got as well. Um, you got Clark Schmidt. He's gonna be filling in for Luis Servano right now as he's hurt. All right. You got your closer. You got Clay Holmes. You got Jonathan Loiza as your setup. Wandy Peralta as a setup. You got Michael King as middle relief. Lou Trevino. Who forget? Who forgets that trade that they, they made with the A's where they brought Lou Trevino over last year? He really didn't do much. You got Tommy Cannelly as your other middle relief. Your long guys are going to be Debbie Garcia, Randy Vasquez, and Clark Schmidt. Again. All right. I got him projected to win 95 wins, finish in first place, best record in the AL. Enough said. Okay. With that standing pat offensively and adding a few guys on defense, on the pitching staff, just makes them more dangerous, okay? Baseball perspectives, 95.8 and 66.2. Hey, we're right on the money, baseball perspectives. Love you guys. Okay, just saying. Now, let's go with the Tampa Bay Rays, or Tampa Rays, because you know what? It's the Bay. We're just naming the whole area, Tampa Bay. Here we go. The Tampa Bay Rays, they went, tw- in 2022, they went 86 and 76. They lost in the wild card versus the Cleveland Guardians, Okay. Their Pythagorean had them at 87 and 75. See, I'm telling you that Pythagorean is right on the money, boys and girls. That's the stat you got to look at. Here's another deal. They scored 666 runs last year. <coughs> Excuse me, I got a little hair in my throat. All right, they allowed 614 runs, though. Their top three players were Yandy Diaz, Randy Ar- Arizona, or Arazo- uh, Ar- Arena. I don't know. Randy A. I'm just going to call him Randy A because I can't pronounce that last name for some reason. Taylor Walls, right? Their top three starters are going to be Shane McLehan, Jeffrey Springs, and Drew Rasmussen. Their key addition was Zach Eflin from the Philadelphia Phillies. They lost Kluber. Not a big deal. They lost Yarbrough. Not a real big deal. G-Man Cho. They lost him to the Pirates. Yeah, it's going to be a big deal. Kevin Kiermeyer, Kind of a big deal. Mike Zunino. Kind of a big deal. But their be- their catcher is going to be Christian Betancourt. Their first base is going to be uh, Diaz. Their second base Brandon Lowe. Shortstop Wander Wander Franco. Left field is going to be Randy A. Do I have a? Th- I didn't even put a third baseman on their team. What was I thinking? I have no. Uh, I did not do this very well, boys and girls. So I was, forgot a third baseman. Uh, Jose Series is going to play center field. And Manuel Margot is going to play right, and Harold Ramirez is going to be your designated hitter. Okay? Then, for their pitching staff, you're going to have McLehan starting day one. You got Drew Rasmussen, Zach Elfin as your 2-3. Jeffrey Springs is going to be your 4. And Chironis is going to be your 5th. Your closer is going to be by committee. Just saying. Uh, you got Pete Fairbanks. You got Jason Adam. You got... Uh, Colton Doc as well. Uh, your setup guy is going to be Jalen Be- Beeks. Uh, you got your middle reliever, which is going to be Barrett Clevenger, Garrett Clevenger, and Colby White. 
And then you got Taj Brad. He's going to get called up at some point. I'm pretty sure about that as well. All right. Uh, I got them winning 85, 86 games. Maybe 80. Uh, we'll go 88. Let's go 88. That way that puts them ahead of the uh, of the Orioles there. Uh, baseball Prospectus has them going 86.3 and 75.7. Um, yeah, again, Tampa, Baltimore might be a team that battle for that second wild card spot. But I think the consistency of this team, uh, and they just don't have to make a run. They they lost a very good. They got a pretty good staff, but they lost a hell of a catcher in uh, Zunino. So there we go. That's your AL East. Four of your five of in your AL East. We got the Toronto Blue Jays. We're going north of the border, guys. Everybody, let's go north of the border where we say A and Bay and I don't know. They got like Drake up there. I mean, Drake's not a bad guy. Anyways, uh, Toronto Blue Jays. We're going ninety two and. They went 92 and 70 last year, finished second place, lost in the wild card to Seattle. The Pythagorean had them 91 and 71. They had 775 runs scored, but they gave up 671. Their top three players, boys and girls: George Springer, Alejandro Kirk, Vlad Guerrero Jr. Top three pitchers: Alec Manoa, Kevin Gaussman, Gaussman and Jordan Romano, who's probably one of the consist more consistent closers in the major leagues right now. Your key additions were Dalton Varsho, Brandon Belt, Kevin Kiermeyer, Chris Bassett, Chad Green. Look at that. You got a Yankee and a Tampa Bay Ray. Uh, their key losses, they did trade away T. Oscar Hernandez, Gabriel Moreno, Ross Stripling left, and Lourdes Guerrero Jr. is also not available. Uh, their starting lineup is going to be Alejandro Kirk, Vlad Guerrero Jr., Whit Merrifield at second, Bo Bichette at short, Matt Chapman at third, Dalton Varshaw out in left, Kevin Kiermeyer in center, George Springer in right, and Brandon Belt as your DH. Remember when you know, they were talking about Kevin Biggio and Bo Bichette and Vlad Guerrero being the future of this team? Yeah, that's really has just came down to Bo Bichette and Vlad Guerrero now. So, I mean, Kevin Bichette, Kevin Biggio is still going to be your uh, be a utility player. So your starting five pitchers are going to look like this. Alec Manoa is starting the bump of day one. Okay, Kevin Gaussman. Jose Barreros, Chris Bassett, UC Kikuchi. I probably spelled, said that last name wrong because I'm horrible at name, folks, as you may know. Next up, you got Jordan Romano, Adam Simber. As your, you got Jordan Romano as a closer, Anders, Adam Simber as a setup, Anthony Bass as a setup, Chad Green as middle relief, Eric Swanson middle relief, Yumi Garcia as middle relief as well. You got Zach Thomason playing your long guy. You got Trent Thornton long, and you got... Hyun Jin Ryu as your long as well. I got him projected as second place, you know, behind the AL East. Uh, they'll probably be the be- third best team in the AL, maybe. Uh, they're definitely going to get about 94, about 90, 92 wins. Uh, pitching is just too good. Their offense is really good as well. Um, and they got a good balance of lefty righty. <coughs> and they got that three headed monster in Vlad Guerrero, Bo Bichette, and Springer. Baseball Prospectus had them going 89-72. and 72. So, there's your AL East. That's how we do it around these parts. All right. Oh, man, we're only, 20, we're only 27 minutes into this bad boy. This is going to be a fun, fun time, boys and girls. All right, next up we got the AL Century. AL, AL Central, not AL Century, AL Central. First up, Chicago White Sox. They went 81-81 and 81 last year. Finished in second place, 11 games behind at that 500. The Pythagoreans said they were supposed to be 79-84. and 84. They did uh, score 687 runs, but gave up 717. Wow. Top three players, Jose Abreu. He gone. He's, with the, he's now with the Astros. Luis Robert Jr., Elvis Andros, your top three position players. Your top three pitchers are going to be Dylan Cease, Johnny Cueto, I think he's gone too, and Michael Kopech. Uh, your key additions was Andrew Benatendi, Mike Clevenger, Elvis Andrews. Uh, yeah, sure. All right, cool, because uh, they re-signed him. Uh, Gregory Santos, uh, Franklin Herman, and they kept Tim Anderson as well. Your key losses are definitely Jose Abrero, Johnny Cueto, A.J. Pollock, Josh Harrison, Vince Velasquez, Adam Engel, Denny Mendri- Mendrick, uh, Burnett Sousa, and Jason Blouse. Uh, you lost all those guys. That's a big hit. Uh, a little bit of everything, boys and girls. 
All right. I got their projected starting lineup as catcher Yasmati Grandel. First base, Andrew Vaughn. Second base, Elvis Andrews. Shortstop, Tim Anderson. Third base, Yoan Mencota. Left field, Andrew Benatendi. Center field, Luis Roberts Jr. Right field, Gavin Sheets or uh, Yuliqui Cespedes. Cespedes. And your DH is Eloy Jimenez. Your pitching staff, right off the gate, we're going to go Dylan Cease. We've got Lance Lynn behind him. Lucas Giallo, third. Michael Kopech, fourth. Mike Clevenger, fifth. You got your closer as Kendall Graveman. Setup man is going to be Liam Hicks. Other setup, other closer, I should say, is going to be Liam Hicks. Uh, your setup guy is going to be Ronaldo. Um, I can't even pronounce that name either. Ronaldo. Oh, Ronaldo Lopez. I can't read my writing. That's the problem. Other setup guy is Aaron Bummer. Uh, setup guy is Garrett Crochet. Mr. Joe Kelly is going to be middle relief. You got Franklin Herman as middle relief. Gregory Santos is middle relief as well. Your long guys are going to be Davis Martin and Jimmy Lambert. Okay? Horrible offseason. Lost better players than what they brought in. Definitely not a 500 team. Uh, baseball protects, prospectus has them at 78 and 83. I'm saying more like uh, 74. Five, 74 win team. Not that great of an offseason for them. Next up, we got the Cleveland Guardians from Ohio. All right, they're 2022. They were 92 and 70. First place. Lost in the ALDS to the New York Yankees. All right, their Pythagorean had them at 88 and 74. Not a bad deal. They had 698 runs scored. They gave up 635 runs or 634 runs. Uh, Andres Jimenez, who just got the bag two days ago. It was their top player. Jose Ramirez came in second. Steve Kwan, who started off great last year, was your top three players right there. Your top pitchers, you got Tristan McKenzie, Shane Bieber, and Emmanuel Classe. Just saying. Then, here's the two guys you just add. You just got better at first base with Josh Bell, and you just got better at catcher with Mike Zunino. Your key losses are going to be Austin Hedges, Brian Shaw, uh, Luke Mell, and uh, Kirk McCarthy. But, you're gonna, like I said, you're going to have Zunino at catcher, Bell at first, Jimenez is playing second, Rosario is playing short, Ramirez is playing third, Quan is playing left, Miles Straw is playing center, Oscar Gonzalez is playing right, and Josh Naylor is going to be your DH. Not a bad little lineup if I say myself. All right. Pitching wise, we got a starter right off the gate is going to be Shane Bieber. Okay. Then we're going to follow that up with Tristan McKenzie, Cal Quintrell, Cal Quintrell Aaron Savali, Zach Plesak. Just saying. All right, your closer is going to be Emmanuel Classe, James, and then you got your setup guy is J- game James Karachek. Setup guy is Trevor Steven. Middle relief is Eli Morgan. Middle relief is going to be Iniel De Los Santos. And another middle relief is going to be Nick Sandlin. All right, you got Connor Plinkenton is playing along. Probably be another starter thrown in there as well. You got Jason uh, Blouse as along, and you got. Uh, Xavier Curry as maybe a starter long guy as well. Definitely upgraded at catcher. Definitely upgraded at first base. Huge upgrades. Um, baseball prospectus has them going 87 and 0.9 and 74.1. Um, I'm saying it's going to be right there at 91. It's going to be a dogfight between with them and the next team for first place in the AL Central. And that team is going to be the Minnesota Twinkies. Where they like to say... Minnesota, because back in the '60s, they didn't the uh, the <clears throat> they didn't want to leave St. Paul out. And after the Minneapolis Lakers had left, they made it to where all professional teams had to be named Minnesota, so that way everybody feels incorporated. So that is why. So last year they went 78 and 84, finished in third place, 14 games back. The Pythagorean had them at 82 and 80. They had 696 runs scored and only gave up 684. Their top three players is Carlos Correa, Luis Arez, Brian Buxton. Their top pitchers are Johan Duran, Sonny Gray, and Joe Ryan. Their key additions, huge addition right here, Mr. Carlos Correa. He was a giant, he was a Met, but he ended up being a Twinkie. All right? You got Pablo Lopez, great pitcher. Jose Salas, Christian Vasquez, Joey Gallo. I'm just going to hit bombs in right field. Michael A. Taylor, and you got Kyle Farmer as well. 
losses are going to be Luis Arez, Gio Urshela, and Gary Sanchez. All right? Your pitching staff is going to be looking like this, boys and girls. We got right on the, uh, or I should say the starting lineup. I should Before we get their pitchers, let's get into the starting lineup. Starting lineup is going to be Christian Vasquez behind the plate, Alex Kirilov at first, Jorge Polanco at second. Right now he's hurt, so it's going to be Nick Gordon filling in there. Uh, you got Carlos Correa at short, Jose Miranda at third, Joey Gallo playing left for now. Um, you got center field Michael A. Taylor or Buxton. In left and right field, you got Max Kepler. DH is going to be Buxton or Gallo. They're going to start Buxton out at the DH, give him a little time off from playing the field to start the year. Be, you got your pitchers, you wise. You got Sonny Gray, Pablo Lopez, Joe Ryan, Taylor Molly, Quinta Maeda, and then you got Bailey Ober as your sixth. Your closer is going to be Jorge Lopez. All right. Your setup guys, Johan Duran. Your setup guy, Ket Griffin Jacks. Middle relief, Trevor Miguel. Miguel. All right. Middle relief, Jorge Alca- Alcola, Alcal- Alcala, Emilia Pagan. Long is Cole is going to be Cole Sands, um, Linder, and Ronnie uh, Henriquez. All right, Simeon Woods Richardson will be a guy that gets called up at some point. Baseball perspectives have to go in eighty-eight point two, seventy-three point seven, through a seventy-three point eight. I say they're a ninety-one team, possibly possibly 85 either way or i should say 87 yeah 80 not 85 87 90 wins 91 wins uh they'll either get first or second i'm guaranteeing guaranteeing a top two spot and a playoff team and a playoff spot that's all i'm saying all right next up we got the detroit tigers who really didn't do jack and swat because they're the detroit tigers all right they went 66 and 96 last year they went for they finished in fourth place, twenty six games back. Their Pythagorean had them at sixty three and ninety nine. They scored five hundred and fifty seven runs, seven hundred and thirteen runs allowed. Javi Baez was their top player. Eric Hasse, Hasse, R- Riley Green rounded that out. Your top pitchers was Tariq Scobel, Jose Cicero, Matt Manning. Key additions was Michael Lorenzen. That's it. Key losses was Soto, Joe Jimenez, Tucker Barnhart. Daniel Norris, Himir Candelero, Andrew Chafin. Your starting lineup is going to look like this. Eric Haas, uh, Spencer Torkelson at first, Jonathan Shoup at second, Javi Baez at short, Andy uh, Abanez at third, Akil Badu at left, Riley Green at center, Austin Meadows right, Miggy Cabrera as your DH. All right. Your pitching staff is going to look like this. Eduardo Rodriguez straight off the top. Matt Manning, Spencer Turnbull, Matthew Boyd, Michael Lorenzen, Tariq Scoble is going to be your sixth starter. You got your closer as Alex Lang, Jose Cicinero is your setup. Will Vest is another setup guy. All right. You got Jason Foley's middle relief, Freddie uh, Pacalicto, and Miguel Diaz is your middle relief. And you got Joey uh, Wentz and Alex Fado and Casey Mike. Mike uh, Mize, sorry, Casey Mize is your long, okay? Tigers need to do a lot of stuff. They need to do a complete rebuild. There's no way they're going to be anywhere that possible to be contention or anything. They need to do a huge salary dump. The baseball prospectus has them going 65 and 96, or, yeah, 65.2 and 96.8. I think it's going to be more like a 60 and a 102. I think they're going to lose over 100 games. All right, last of the AL Central. And then we're going to have to finish this podcast after this one and start up the AL West on the next one, boys and girls. All right. <clears throat> Got to split that up a little bit. Out here picking up kids, doing a podcast in the car right now. It's fantastic, let me tell you. So Kansas City Royals, last year they went 65-97, and 97, finished in last place, 27 games back. Pythagorean had them 64-98. and 98. They had 640 runs scored, 810 runs allowed. Their top three players was Michael A. Taylor. He gone. Salvador Perez, Andrew Benintendi, and he only played until the trade, and he was only with them until the trade deadline. Then he went to New York, got hurt, and didn't play again. But he gone too. Top three pitchers are going to be Brady Singer, Scott Barlow, and Zach Grinke. Your key additions are going to be Jordan Lyles, Araldus Chapman, and Ryan Yarborough. Your key losses are Taylor, Mondesi, O'Hearn, and Miskiewicz. All right. <coughs> your starting lineup is going to be Salvador Perez, your catcher. You got Vinny Pasquatino at first, 
Michael Massey at second, Bobby Wood Jr. at short, Hunter Dozier at third. You got Eaton in left, you got Kyle Isbell in center, and you got, um, I didn't put a right filter down for these boys, so how do you like that? But you got MJ Melendez at DH. Wow, that's twice. I really needed attention to detail, boys and girls. Be very attention to detail, just saying. That's all I got to say about that. And sometimes my ADD brain just kicks in and I'm not attended to squat, okay? Your starting pitcher is going to be right off the right off the bump. Day one starter, Brady Singer, Zach Grinky, number two, Jordan Lyles, three, Ryan Yarbrough, four, Brad, Brad Keller, five. Do not pick up any of these guys on your fantasy baseball team. Just saying. All right, you got your closer. You got Scott Barlow. You also got closer Raldus Chapman. A little left righty punch. I don't know why. Royals are gonna suck. All right. Next up, you got Dylan Coleman at your setup. You got Josh St- Stadamont as setup. Amir Garrett middle relief. Richard Lovelady, <laughs> oh yeah, this I got a little chuckle of this because if he doesn't go by Richard, then he's going to go by Dick. So it'll be Dick Lovelady, just saying that. For, have that one in your little baseball mind now, boys and girls, every time he hits a, gets on the bump. All right, you got Jose Sinas as your middle relief. Your long is going to be Chris Bubik, uh, Jonathan Heasley, and Jackson Kowar as your long, all right? I got my prediction. It's going to be more of the same. They lost a ton of best player. They lost, they lost their best player. They lost their third best player. They added nobody realistically. Um, yeah, their future is not bright. Okay, so really uh, need a n- another team that needs a real rebuild here. Uh, baseball prospectus has them going sixty three point seven and ninety eight point three. I'm gonna say they're sixty one win team season. They beat the Tigers one more time than the Tigers beat them this year. That's all there is to it. All right, so that rounds out the old AL. Um, Central, AL East. Uh, we're going to top off with the AL West next on the next uh, first, when we start up the next podcast, the next episode. Um, so that's where we're going to go with next. We'll do the AL West and then we'll finish out the rest of it and we'll do the NL East or the NL teams as well. All right. So make sure to turn back into episode two that's going to be following this one. All right. Just hit that. Just keep playing. Just keep playing that. All right. So. I'm Chad Kane, one guy with a mic, dingers and dunks, a lot of dingers. We don't dunk around here. We barely make, we don't even make threes. We're more like a uh, 15 feet and in type shooter. All right. So, uh, turn back in for part two of this episode. That's going to be right behind this. So all you got to do is just continue to listen, like I said. Uh, But hey, in the meantime, while you're waiting for that to load back up, hit that follow button, hit that bell so that way you know when I'm going to drop a new episode. And make sure you go comment on a tweet or something. All right, go follow me on Twitter. All right, all right. I will see y'all in about two seconds. Later. Hey there, sports history fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude. And I hope that you enjoyed this recent episode presented by the Sports History Network and were able to learn some good old-fashioned sports history knowledge nuggets. I started the Sports History Network back in 2020 with the mission to help podcasters find a community of like-minded sports history nerds as well as helping aspiring podcasters to start their own shows. We have a little bit over 30 shows on the network right now covering all sorts of sports history, but as far as I'm concerned, we're just at the toothpick in the ocean moment, you know that. Can't even figure it out because there's so much more coming. We wanted to create the ultimate headquarters for sports yesteryear starting with Podcast Network and our website, but we're going to continue to move into other mediums as well. And here's the cool part, because we want you to be part of our team. So if you're interested in starting your own podcast, or maybe being a guest on one of our shows, or who knows, maybe even writing an article for us over on the website. Seriously, all you got to do is reach out to us on the contact page over at sportshistorynetwork.com. You can be as technologically savvy as a Neanderthal tapping on a stone trying to figure out this whole hieroglyphics thing back in the day. Again, it doesn't matter, because even if you don't understand the whole podcast space, we have a production team that can pretty much help you out with doing everything. All you got to do, head over to sportshistorynetwork.com, head to the contact page, fill it out. That message goes right to me, and I'll reach out to you as soon as I can. But for now, dude, I'm through if you're through.